Hello and welcome back to Investing for Generations. And as last year, I also want to continue this year every weekend with my weekly update on my real money portfolio. And so here we are with week one of 2022. And I'm sorry, maybe you can listen. I'm a little bit sick. Uh, don't worry, nothing serious. Just listen a little bit crazy. So we have the week one of 2022. And as every weekend, I will give you my weekly update on my real money portfolio with a full insight to all the transactions, all the received dividends I got last week and all the plans I have with this portfolio. So let's go. And if you're new to my channel, then you should know that I'm very transparent here with my real money portfolio. You can follow every transactions I did. And last week at the end of the year, I just made a video about my whole portfolio with a full recap of 2021. Feel free to check this out just to get a feeling what I'm doing here. And if you like it, then please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and follow me on my road as a long term value investor. Because this is what I do here. I try to look for quality businesses for a good price because this equals a good return over time. So first of all, it's to find quality, good businesses, and then just wait for a good chance for a good risk and reward ratio and buy for a reasonable price. And how to find these businesses? I made a video, I think a year ago or so, uh, about the seven key numbers for me for investing. Check this out. You find the link here up on the screen or down in the description below. And then with all the numbers around, all the noise around, these are the seven numbers I focus on. And then you just need time and time will make you wealthy if you stick to your plan. That's the whole goal. That's what I'm doing here. So before we jump in into the transactions of week one, don't forget to subscribe, ring the notification bell to never miss another video. Thank you. So last week there was just two smaller transactions because there was an ex dividend date of Scotiabank. And so I bought on January 3rd, two more shares of Scotiabank for $71 and 70 cents. And I'm quite happy with this position because Scotiabank very good dividend payer for more than hundred years. And, uh, even still don't look very cheap, have a pay ratio of almost 12 and still a forward dividend yield of 4.35%. And so the banks overall could be one of the winner if the Fed really raise the interest rates. Who knows? I'm not so quite sure if this really will work out how they plan it. But anyways, um, Bank of Nova Scotia or Scotia Bank for me, a basis investment and still looks not expensive. And then also my other bank had the ex dividend date last week, JP Morgan. And there also I bought on January 5th, two more shares for $166 and 40 cents. And so overall now I have 32 shares of JP Morgan and the overall performance is almost 74% or an absolute gain of $2,332 and almost the same like with the Bank of Nova Scotia. Also here, the P ratio of 10 still seems not expensive. Uh, still a good forward dividend yield of 2.42%. And so I will just stick with my two big banks. Then I also received a dividend last week. I received my dividend from Allstate, $26.85. Um, that's quite nice if you have a cash flow like this in your portfolio. Also, like the banks, also the insurances uh, could be one of the winner when the interest rates really rise. And so also Allstate with a P ratio of 11.6 and the forward dividend yield of 2.57% also don't look too expensive to me. And so I will just hold um, this position. And if you're new to my channel, this may be good to know you find deeper analyzes, full analyzes of all the businesses I mentioned here on my channel. Just check this out. There I go through the business model, through the financial numbers, the management, calculate the intrinsic value, and then just explain when and why I bought in the first place. So feel free to check this out. 
Then I was able to deposit more money in my portfolio last week. The reason for that is more that I will focus on one account. Right now I have two accounts, one with Comdirect, a German direct bank, where I have my European or almost German portfolio. Uh, you also find um, a video about the full recap for 2021 on my channel of, of this portfolio and um, my other my other North American or international uh, portfolio I talk here about I have with interactive brokers and I decided to over time put um, it just to one account to interactive brokers just because come direct is too expensive and I also want to focus it on one account and so I will do over time I don't want to switch all the positions to interactive brokers because I look at it and this seems to me too difficult and so I decided for me I will just let the portfolio with Comdirect run and every time when I sell something I will just transfer the money to interactive brokers and all new buys will go through interactive brokers and so it's very likely that my portfolio which is now mainly from North America, a little bit of China, uh, will be more international and maybe there will be also more German companies into uh, this portfolio I talk here about. So maybe this is, for me it's a little bit easier, maybe for you as well. So that's the plan and that was the reason I was able to deposit more money in the Interactive Brokers account because I sold my Heineken position out of my European portfolio and gained there around 33% and um, with the little bit of cash I had there already um, I was able to transfer $10,453 to Interactive Brokers. So let's take an overview over my portfolio then. And first of all take a look at the pie and then you see that the cash of course climbed up to now 32%. Um, this is quite a lot and normally I like to be full invested if the market is cheap but we are in times where the market is not cheap at all and it's very difficult to find good businesses for reasonable prices and so my cash position was already high before and now it's even higher with 32%. Um, I will try to lower that and um, at least maybe to 28, 25%, something like this. Um, but of course, first of all, I have to find good businesses for reasonable prices. And therefore, I started to look into small caps. I made a video a few days ago uh, where I talked about two cheap small caps, at least it seems like it's small. Check this out, this video. Uh, two very interesting companies to me. I follow them, I'm, they are on my watch list. Um, and we will see maybe sooner or later I will buy into one or maybe both of them. And this is also what I will do in the future. I will just look more into the small caps. I just looked to the ETF of small caps with over 2000 stocks and just go one by one. And then hopefully I find maybe a handful very interesting companies too I already found. And then just take a look at all the current positions in my portfolio. Um, and as I said before, the Bank of Nova Scotia is the best performing stock right now with 93.84% since the start of the 2nd of December 2019. This was the day when I was starting this portfolio in the first place. And Bank of Nova Scotia is followed by JP Morgan, Coca-Cola, Berkshire, Legend and Platt, and so on. And at the end of the list, as always, I would say, uh, the Chinese companies Alibaba and Tencent but lately this week um, also Alibaba Tencent also Baidu my third Chinese stock in this portfolio um, climbed up and maybe they can turn around and hopefully they can turn around in 2022 because the businesses are still great this is a reason I'm invested and maybe the very very negative sentiment can just turn around and with that then the stocks will too. And maybe you, you listened in the media, I'm very sure if you watch this video. Uh, also Charlie Munger doubled down again on Alibaba, so uh, 
hopefully I'm in the same boat like Charlie Munger. This shouldn't be too bad, even if it's no guarantee, of course. Then also take a look at my close trade since I started this portfolio at the 2nd of December 2019. And there you see uh, some very good um, trades with Imperial Oil, uh, more than a doubling, Caterpillar, Walt Disney, Stamps.com. And with that, let's just jump to the performance overall. And first of all, take a look at the performance of the last week. This doesn't say much, but I want to put this in here every week, just that you see how I perform in the current year and of course after one week this have nothing much to say and overall my performance and this is way more important uh, since the 2nd of december 2019 um, gained 62.89 percent which is the outperformance to the s p 500 of around 13 percent and of the dow jones of over 30 percent that's quite nice and this is the important number for me and with this idea of long-term value investing i will just go on and move on and if you like this whole idea then please subscribe ring the notification bell and follow me my way and as i said i will go on to analyze more small caps uh, we'll go through this 2000 stocks in the etf one by one and then every week i will talk and analyze one or two of them uh, here on the channel and make a video and uh, this needs a lot of time to look through this and analyze these stocks this takes a lot of time and then since i'm not very professional uh, video editor also it takes so much time and effort to make all of these video on at least a basis quality and if you want to support me for this work and for this time i put in to give you all of these analyses and information uh, then just I give you my PayPal here on the screen or down in the description below. And if you want to support me, I'm very happy about that. Thank you. That's it for today. See you next week with more analyses of small cap companies. And hopefully we we'll find the one or the other bargain. But thanks that you're watching today. See you then. Take care. Bye bye.